Welcome fans to a spread solo edition. I'm your host Jim Sella in studio with myself. The NFL draft is over. Training camp is nearing. I know Steeler fans are getting ready. Everybody's starting to analyze everything. Camp battles haven't even started yet, but in Steeler football fans' minds, they've already ended. The first thing on a lot of Steeler fans' minds is Jarvis Jones. The team declined the 2017 option on Jones' rookie contract, so he will have to play back onto the roster after this season. That's going to be pretty tough to do. This guy started 15 games last year. He had a career year, but that was two sacks, one forced fumble, and only one pick. Now, we don't expect him to get a lot of interceptions, but as a Steeler linebacker, especially an outside linebacker in the 3-4 system, he got to get more than two sacks. This guy started 26 of the 36 career games he's been in the NFL. He has five sacks. That's just not enough. In contrast, rookie Bud Dupree last year only started five games, and he had four sacks. So he's only one behind Jones, and he started 22 less games. It's just pathetic. Now, Jarvis Jones has come out and said that he's going to play his hardest. He's going to do whatever he can to earn his way back onto the roster. Of course he's going to say that. Nobody's going to come out and say, hey, I'm complete garbage. Give me a contract. So I, I'm not completely convinced, and I don't know if we're going to see Jones back next year. The way I see it, there's only two things that can actually happen. One, Jones can be garbage again, and the team's not going to re-sign him because he's garbage. Two. Jones has a career year, goes off for 10, 12 sacks, and then demands this absorbent amount of money because he's had one good season and the Steelers aren't going to pay it. Very similar situation happened with Jason Worlds, except for they were going to use the franchise tag on him and then he retired and became a Jehovah's Witness. I don't see Jarvis Jones becoming a Jehovah's Witness, but I also don't see the Steelers wanting to use a franchise tag on a guy who's only had one good year and that's if he even has a good year and that's a really big if and I know the Steelers system is shying away a little bit from the traditional 3-4 system it's not going to be just outside linebackers blitzing defensive linemen eating up blocks so the linebackers can get to the quarterback the linebackers are asked to do a lot more asked to do a lot more coverage and to me I would honestly maybe try to use Jones in a rotation on the outside and passing downs putting his hand on the ground they're trying to find that rotation guy for Cam Hayward and Stephon Tuitt and passing downs on the outside. Why not let Jarvis Jones do it every once in a while? He did it in college. He was a defensive end in college. He knows how to put his hand on the ground and rush the quarterback. Now, I'm not saying move him to the defensive end completely, but there's no reason in this hybrid style 2-2-3 two, two, or 3-5-8 or whatever the hell they're deciding to run this year, that he can't mix in a little bit of linebacker play with a little bit of pass rushing with his hand on the ground. That might be Jarvis's best bet at having a career year because then he's just a pure pass rusher. He does do okay against the run. He does, I don't know, disengage from blockers well. I don't know if it's his quickness or his lack of pass rush moves, but he can rarely beat a tackle around the outside, and he doesn't seem to have the strength or the skill to have any type of inside pass rush so he's too slow to get outside he's not enough skill to get inside how do you get to the quarterback that that's the million dollar question for this guy he has no answer to it obviously five sacks in only three years so to me it's a big if for Pittsburgh you have no idea what you're gonna get out of this guy obviously you bring him into camp and see what you have is there a chance he gets cut this year I don't think so the Steelers have some depth at outside linebacker, but with James Harrison being his number one backup and being 55 years old or whatever the hell he is right now, there's no, it's just not the smart move. You don't cut somebody who at least can eat up games. And I know Jones has been hurt his fair share of games, but you just can't trust somebody as old as Harrison to be your full-time starter and have almost nobody to back him up. Now, you do have Arthur Motes, who could be on either side, I guess, because Bud Dupree will most likely be the outside linebacker on the other side. But just because you didn't pick up the option on Jones doesn't mean you give up on him right now. You give him that one last year. Maybe this is a little bit of incentive. Maybe it lit a fire under him. Hey, we're not satisfied with you. We think you suck. 
And they actually waited till like the last hour almost to even declare it. So uh, whether they were pondering it or they were making him think about it, I don't know. Tomlin could be playing these weird mental games. He does have a degree in sociology, so he is kind of a sociopath himself. I don't really know what's going on. But if I'm Pittsburgh, I'm really careful what I do with Jarvis Jones. Like I said, even if he has that career year and goes off for 10 sacks, how do you justify giving somebody with his lack of production a big contract? I just wouldn't do it. The franchise tag for him would be too much. Unless maybe the Steelers buck the trend, he starts to have a good year and they give him a fair market value contract in the middle of the season. But I really don't see that happening. It almost never happens. I can't even remember the last time, honestly, that it's happened for a Pittsburgh Steeler in the middle of a season. Pretty much as soon as camp ends, all contract talks are done. I just, I don't see a deal being done before the season. So Jarvis is going to have to play well and he's going to have to play hard and he's going to have to be way more productive than two sacks and one forced fumble in 15 starts. Now will the Steelers defense give him that opportunity? The jury's still out on that one. We'll have to see what Keith Butler does with this defense. He apparently has simplified it even more so that the rookies can step in. You could have a rookie safety and a rookie cornerback starting this year. Maybe a simplified defense helps Jarvis Jones. Maybe you simplify what you ask him to do and put him in a better situation to succeed. But then again, he's a first-round pick. Why do you have to cater to that? You should have the skill set as a first-round pick to be able to just come in and do not anything that they ask you, but basically whatever they ask you considering your position. So if you ask me, it's a roll of the dice. Jarvis Jones, play your heart out, buddy. I hope you have a career year. Even though I think it's going to screw you for the Steelers in the end, maybe you'll get that big money deal somewhere else. I just want you to have a career year because I want Pittsburgh's defense to get better, and I want to win the damn Super Bowl. But other than that, that's all I got for you right now on Jarvis Jones. Bit of a short segment. This guy's not good enough to talk about for a long time. Fans, follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. As always, keep coming back to YouTube. Keep clicking subscribe. We're closing in on like 5,000 segments or something. It's going to be a party.